Okay. Hopefully this time Lily got the invitation to come on camera. I invited her to join in. This has worked in the past, but there's no telling. Hi, Colleen. Thanks for hopping back on. I'm hoping that Lily will hop on. Hi, Andrea. Thank you for being loyal. Thanks for watching live. Yeah, if you all, if you're live, if you'd um, let me know that you're watching live, that would be great. Um, I'm really interested in how your weather is doing today. It is so hot and muggy here that I can't believe it. Just ridiculous after so much rain. All right, Lily, you should have gotten an invitation from me. Do you see it? Where you are invited to join. I hope this is going to work. Let's see. We've got quite a few. Doug's watching too. Hey, Doug. I'm going to let Lily. Um, okay. Well, it didn't start up. Hold on one second. Oh, okay. Okay. Allow your viewers to join as a guest in your broadcast. I said yes. Mm -hmm. I don't know what's going on. Okay. Oh, yeah. I bet it is nice and cool out there. Well, Lily, I had where I allowed people to come on. I invited you to watch. Oh, there we go. There we go. Okay, Lily. I'm waiting. It's adding, adding, adding. Thanks, everybody, for being so patient. Lily and I haven't done this together before. So while she's adding, um, yo, I know, killing mosquitoes. We have had terrible mosquitoes here. I noticed that last night. No answer from the live video guest. Hmm. And you try it again, Lily? It didn't add you. Might need to accept. Oh my gosh, technology, isn't it wonderful? <laughs> oh, yeah, and I, I saw that you accepted. I don't know. Will you try it again, Lily, and see if you can get back in the back way? Hi, Vanetta. Um, funny, funny thing. We're talking about perfection tonight. <laughs> oh, boy. Now see, it's got, I can bring a whole bunch of people on camera. Lily, why don't you log out of here and log back in, see if it'll show me that you're watching, and maybe I can just bring you on camera that way. Hey, Erica! We're talking about perfection tonight, and we're having technical issues, so that's only appropriate, don't you think? We're talking about our gross weather here. But I'm glad it's hot because that's going to dry up all the, all the rain. Hi, Charlene. Oh, so I hope everyone's having a good night. I'm hoping Lily can join in here. I think she's going to log out and then come back in and show me that she's watching. I hope, I hope. I hope, I hope. Um, Anyway, so we're talking about, is it rainy there too? Yeah, it's been raining like nonstop for about five straight days here. Um, our river is way above flood stages and it's just insane. No, I can't see you, Lily. Can you see me? <laughs> I wonder if I... No. No, I cannot see you. Yeah, we're talking about how perfect we are. <laughs> Which I think is so funny. Tell her to touch the camera in the space bar. 
It gives you the option to join your live. You try that, Lily. We're going to keep playing around with it, but I'll I'll be chatting while um while we're trying to figure this out. Oh, in the status bar, Lily, she said to Oh, she's on her laptop. Oh, I think you need to be on your phone, Lily. Can you get on on your phone? I think that's what it is. <sighs> yeah, yeah, Lily, I, if you can get on on your phone, I think that's going to work. Since I'm on my phone, I think we have to do phone to phone. So anyway, while we're diddling around here trying to figure out, okay, take your time. I'll um I'll start chatting while you're getting yourself together. Don't it's not a big deal. Um so perfectionism. Wow. Hey Lily. Um it's really about isn't it just like having like an endless report card of accomplishments? Um I call myself a recovering perfectionist. Um I'm not over it completely. I'm a lot better than I used to be. Um, you know, one of the, the big things that we do a lot, I think, is compare ourselves to others, and that's how we evaluate our own performance. And, um, you know, the, the danger of that is that we only see, for the most part, the highlight reel. Um, some people are pretty transparent and authentic. I try to be, um... But we don't see the backstory a lot of times of what's going on in people's lives. So um, we, you know, we'll look at someone and we'll think um, that they have, they're doing so much better than we are. Um, they're so much more successful or they're so much more together or they've got things more figured out. Um, when really we just see those, those few posts on Facebook, on social media, on Instagram, um, just get a few flashes, a few glimpses, you know, and, um, I call that the highlight reel. And, um, that's a lot of times all we see. So it's very easy to convince ourselves if we're a little bit insecure anyway, that, um, that we don't measure up. And if we're perfectionists, um, we can really get depressed and really get down on ourselves about that. Um, and that's one of the big, it's funny because we, we strive so hard to be perfectionists, but we're really working against our, um, what we're striving for when we make that our sole focus, you know, it can lead to depression. Um, it can, you know, it manifests itself all kinds of ways. I mean, at, in extreme cases, it can lead to, you know, alcohol abuse, drug abuse, um, all kinds of uh, maladaptive behaviors trying to, you know, numb the pain that we're not good enough. Yeah, I know, um, Erica, I, I have too more so in the past, but I can still, you know, get in a little, in a little cycle of, oh, you know, like I have several friends who are authors and they've published all these books, you know, and I'm still, okay, here we go, Lily. It's adding. Let's see if it'll do it. Um, yay. Can you turn your phone the other way? Um, yay. Is it, oh, woohoo. Okay, so it accepted. Yay. Like that. <laughs> That's okay. There we go. You're here now. We were chatting. Yes. We were chatting while we were getting it straight. I should have mentioned a thing. I found out the hard way um, about you have to both be on a phone or on the same device in order for it to work. Uh-oh, I hope we haven't lost our feed. Oh, no, there you are. Okay. Hey, Jean. <laughs> Jean, if you just tuned in, you missed all the um, shenanigans of trying to have someone join the live. You remember what that's like, right? Jean and I got oh. over being perfect on lives a long time ago when we tried to do a couple together and we just, oh, it went on and on and on. No, she's back. There's, there's probably a little bit of a lag, but that's okay. Um, I'm having some uh, network issues. Excuse me one moment while I try to. Okay. Well, we were just, trying to just fix saying how um, 
how so often we can, when we compare our lives to somebody else's highlight reel on social media, how we can get so hard on ourselves. And I was saying how I have um, quite a few friends who are authors and some of them um, have published lots of books, you know, and I'm struggling and working hard to just get this second one done. And, um, you know, it makes me feel, if I let it, it makes me feel like, oh my gosh, you know, they're so much better than I am. And it's not, that's not the case. Um, they've just written more books than I have. And maybe they are better writers, but that's okay. Um, I'm writing what I feel called to write. And that's the important thing. Um, so when we focus only on, on perfection and avoiding failure, um, you all weigh in and let me know, does that just kind of make you freeze in your tracks? Um, like maybe it, it prevents you, you're so afraid you're not going to be perfect that you don't even go after your dream. Um, you know, and that's, that's really too bad. Um, when you're a perfectionist, um, perfection's never enough, is it? Um, because we get perfect, we do something perfectly, and we say, oh, I know I could do it like 1% better or 5% better, and we beat ourselves up because we don't do that. Um, and it, like I said, it can really keep us like from trying new things, from going after our dreams, um, from doing, you know, what we were made to do. God made us to um, do very specific things. And if we're always worried, uh, if we're afraid that I, I don't want to do that because I don't know how to do it, and everyone will know that I'm not perfect, then we never get anything done. So that's, and that's kind of what Lily and I talked about. And in fact, it's funny that we're having these little snags with perfection. And this whole thing, bringing Lily on, really started out last Monday. I was going to do this topic. And um, about seven o'clock, we started getting terrible storms here, like they were telling you to take cover. Um, power was flashing on and off. Internet was going up and down. And I just decided it was too chancy um to to go on so kind of throughout the week after that i posted a few things about perfectionism and um i don't really believe there are any coincidences so it was really kind of funny because lily saw one of the um the posts that i made and it it really spoke to her it really touched her and very shortly thereafter she went live she's like okay i'm on this you are speaking to me <laughs> And so that was really neat because you, you want to think that you're helping people, um, you know, and I, I try to, to really be intentional about what topics I talk about and all of that. So um, it was really Sorry, cool. You're okay from, you look okay from here. Are you having trouble keeping it steady? I was trying to prop my phone up because oh, I okay. needed to put it on charge. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, so, I mean, I think everyone who's on knows me and knows who I am. Um, let me tell you a little bit about Lily. We met, I was trying to remember if it was four years ago, five years ago, maybe. I was part of the uh, direct sales company that she's still part of, and that's kind of how we connected. And um, Lily started this epic road trip by herself all the way down to Orlando for our yeah. annual conference. And that was the year that Jim and Jeff and I all three went down and she, we messaged like all the way down. There was a whole string of us because she had car trouble, like every hundred miles. And we were just freaking out, like <laughs> park your car, we'll come and get you. And she just a little trooper. She just pushed through. Hey, Jan. And um, so she became our little sister after that, um, all of us who were on that trip. And even though I'm not with the company anymore, we've stayed friends because, you know, I mean, that's what friends do. Um, so we stayed in touch. And so it was really cool that we could kind of connect um, over this topic because it's something that so many people struggle with. Um, so let me tell you a little bit about Lily. She has two great kids. And she said, tiny humans. She has two German shepherds, four cats, and a toad. So she's got even more of a menagerie, um, Andrea Purdue, than I think you guys do. Um, and she has an amazing fiance that loves and supports her. And he really is. He's an awesome guy. 
Um, I've just been so excited for you, Lily, um, to see how great he is. Oh, thank you. Support you. Um, yeah. And she is definitely adventurous and a risk taker. That was demonstrated on that road trip um, down to Florida. <laughs> and how did you ever get oh. home? Did somebody give you a ride home or did somebody help you get the car fixed? No, um, I actually um, drove the car back to North Carolina. Um, instead of going back to Virginia, I stopped in North Carolina because that's where my mom lived at the time okay. and that's where our mechanic was Good. um because i would literally drive four hours to north carolina to go to the mechanic shop i would not wow. take my car anywhere else well that's how so it is i actually it... go ahead oh yeah so i stopped there um and basically had them on standby the entire trip like calling them going okay this is what it's doing now what <laughs> should i do and they're like park for a few hours and it literally took me twice as long to get I'll home bet. as it did to get down. Hey, Irene. Well, um, so why don't you go ahead and, and – oh, she's also a photographer, and she has a, cu a couple of other things going on on the side, too. She's a busy lady. And I am i didn't ask you specifically, but I assume that you're doing these other side gigs to allow yourself the freedom of being a professional full-time photographer at some point. Um, yeah, actually, I want to be able to travel the world with my camera and my family and have this amazing, successful life. Um, so we can just live freely and, and travel and see all the wonders of the world. That sounds awesome. So why don't why I'm gonna let turn it over to you and let you talk about this is kind of where the perfectionism thing I think picked picked up and where it kind of hit you right where, right where you live. So go ahead and, um, and just, Hey Jake, thanks for hopping on. Go ahead. And um, I'm going to let you just take it over from here. Okay. Um, I'm actually, well, because I'm on my phone right now and that's where the, the picture is, I'm going to pull it up on another web browser real quick. Um, so I don't know if you specifically read out what post you had made that I went live about. So Mary had posted on the 17th a picture that says perfectionism is not a quest for the best. It is a pursuit of the worst in ourselves. The part that tells us that nothing we will do, nothing we do will ever be good enough. That post, like, I love reading what people post, um, whether I comment or react to it or not, I still pay attention. And that one, when I saw the perfectionism, it made me stop and actually like really read it. And I think I read it probably about four or five times and then went, huh, oh, wait a minute. That makes sense. Okay. Because for many, many years, I have put myself through the ringer of apologizing to people when they say, oh, well, no, that's good enough. And I'm like, you know, or that's good, that's good. And I'm like, no, 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 I'm sorry. It's not good enough. I'm a perfectionist. This is not good enough. And I have apologized for this over the years. And it's one of those things that um, it didn't really click that it's a negative thing until I read that post. Um, Somebody said that they lost us. Did they get us back? I can hear you. Okay. I see us. Okay. She said we're back. <laughs> okay. Perfect. Oh, I just saw that and I was like, oh no, am I talking to myself? <laughs> um, so I kind of thought about it before I went live, but then, but only for a brief moment. Um, because when I do my lives, I typically don't plan them out. I just kind of roll with the punches. Um, because I feel like if I try to plan it out, I get a little too wrapped up because that's the perfectionist in me. And it is something that I've been trying to work on with little things, but I've never really thought about it in depth until I read that post. So if anyone has taken time to actually look up the definitions of perfectionism, perfectionist, perfection, and perfect, 
Perfectionism and perfectionists basically have the same definition of refusal to accept any standard short of perfection. Perfection uh, definition is the condition, state, or quality of being free or as free as possible from all flaws and defects or, or, de or defects. Um, perfect is having all the required or desirable elements, qualities, or characteristics as good as it is possible to be. Now, perfectionism comes in many different forms. Um, we have, some of us are perfectionists in the work that we do, whether it's our artwork, whether we're a painter or a photographer, um, whether it's our nine to five job or whatever job that we have, um, it, there's just so many different ways to be a perfectionist. There are some people who are perfectionists when it comes to their body image, um, what and then that can go on for like ancient times on a trail of different ways you can be a perfectionist when it comes to body image um but there really are many different forms of perfectionism and each of us that consider ourselves as perfectionists we have our own reasons that have caused um this this way of thinking um not getting into too much detail, personally, for me, my perfectionism behavior actually came from a very abusive relationship, um, constantly being told, you know, you're, you're not doing this good enough or whatever he would tell me. So I literally started beating myself up over everything, and it was, well, this isn't good enough, and I didn't do this good enough, or I didn't do this good enough, or, you know, like, I messed this up. And I never really thought about what you're doing to yourself right. when you're beating yourself up over being perfect. Um, and, you know, everyone will tell you, you can't expect someone to love you until you've learned to love yourself. Well, I've gone through so many years of saying, well, but I do love myself. But I do love myself. I love myself. I love myself. You know, like I love my eyes or I love my lips or whatever I say that I, I love about myself. But going through all of this made me realize I haven't truly loved myself all of these years because I've been beating myself up. And if I loved myself for who I am, if I truly loved me, I would have never beat myself up as much as I do. And that's something that I think most perfectionists don't think about. They think, you know, like, yeah, I love myself, but they don't think about how, like, the damage they're causing by beating themselves up. Um, between that post and then reading this book, which Mary and I are both reading this <laughs> book, um, and I'm backwards on this camera, but um, You Are a Badass is a book that was suggested to me by one of my team members. It's How to Stop Doubting Your Greatness and Start Living an Awesome Life. For me, I've tried picking up self-help books in the past, and I've read through them, and I'm like, I don't get how this is supposed to help me. However, I've never really stuck through it. I've always skimmed the books to start with. Um... Yes. Speaking of my wonderful Speaking team member, that the wonderful team member that introduced yep, you to the Yep, there she book. is. There's <laughs> Stacy. Um, so I've not gotten as far as I've wanted to in this book. As y'all can see, I, I've just re I'm not reading as much as I should. I'm on chapter um, nine. Oh, you're. I think you're farther than me. I'm on chapter. Oh, actually, no. I'm on chapter eleven. I was oh, further than I go. realized. <laughs> but reading through this book it's like whoa this author is like it's almost as if she is looking straight through these pages yes. looking me straight in the face and saying I am speaking to you yes I so, agree your post made me reflect on the words that I have read thus far even more than what I already had and it was like whoa okay 
these words get a little deeper now. Um, so some of the things that I've, um, I'm going to kind of go over real quick. Um, I made some notes of which pieces I think really make sense into the whole perfectionism realm. Uh, let's see. We're going to go page 23. There's a list in here. Um, and this is in the chapter, my subconscious made me do it. It's a three part list, but specifically the first two, I feel play into that whole perfectionism thing. Number one, our subconscious mind contains the blueprint for our lives. It's running the show based on the unfiltered information it gathered when we were kids, otherwise known as our beliefs. Now, this isn't just true to what was gathered in our minds as children, because my perfectionism didn't start until I was an adult. So it's just basically information that our subconscious mind has gathered over our lifetime. And it's in, and that becomes our belief right. as and a perfectionist it stays there. It does. And it is actually harder. It. Right. And it's harder to eliminate a bad habit or bad thought than it is to create a good habit or a good thought. And it takes a lot less time to form than the good thing. So um, as perfectionists, we have our own reasons why we are the way we are, whether it was the way we were raised or the way we were treated or what society has told us. Number two is we are, for the most part, completely oblivious to these subconscious beliefs that run our lives. And reflecting, I realized this is mm. so true because I wasn't aware of any of it. It was just so natural to go, oh, no, 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 this isn't good enough. I'm a perfectionist. I have to fix this. This isn't right. good enough. And to beat myself up. And I never actually thought about the fact that I was doing this. Another um, thing that stood out to me, let me flip to my page. And this one might not make sense to some people right away, but it says the universe will match whatever vibration you put out and you can't fool the universe. When we beat ourselves up and we say that what we are doing isn't good enough, we are putting out this low frequency vibration. And for most of us, our lives, the, the life we want is up here. Yep. And it is at a, a vibration frequency way up here. But because we keep beating ourselves up and telling ourselves, like, it's not good enough. We're doing this wrong. You know, I could do better. We're down here. And we have to up our game and change our frequency in order to get up here on the same level of the life we want to live with. That's so perfect. if we start that, that's removing. Perfect. <laughs> You said that perfectly. You really did. So when we start removing all of that thought process of this isn't good enough, and we start eliminating that perfectionism, we start becoming the truest, rawest versions of ourselves. And that is when we can actually start controlling our subconscious right. and we can start putting our subconscious behaviors and, and beliefs in check. And then we can start tuning that knob and changing our frequency. Right. And that is when we are going to start loving ourselves. That is when we are going to start realizing who needs to try harder, who needs to, to beat themselves up because I really am perfect the way I am. Yep. Yeah, I'll and, tell and you, that's, that was when I was reading that after depending on which combination of chapters I read, I remember the other day we were driving in the car. So I took it with me and I had to close it up because and I didn't say this out loud because um, Jim would have thought I was crazy. I said, oh, I'm getting a little too awesome. I think I need to shut this because <laughs> it was just like, so. <laughs> you know, it was like. I, I'm not used to having that much of that higher frequency just kind of pour in all at one time. You know, it's been trickling yeah. in and seeping in, but it was just like there were two or three chapters. I was like, yeah, wow. You know, kind of like you were saying, it, it just really hits home. And 
makes you realize um, how you've been sabotaging yourself subconsciously. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I've been doing it with my photography for years. Um, I mean, I did my first couple of weddings in 2013, 2014. And now granted, I realized I will never do another wedding because it, the nightmare and the stress that goes into it. But I realized at that point, what kind of style I have. I learned what I prefer to choose as a subject, but so many times I have taken a photo and I have my days where I'm like, yes, this photo rocks. It is the most amazing thing in the world. And then I have other days where I look at it and I go, oh, that's wrong. That's wrong. That's wrong. That's wrong. Oh God, who am I kidding? I can't do this. I'm horrible. And I literally self-sabotage so much. And I have over the years. Like, I have prevented myself from moving forward into yep. a better life because I have been, like, just beating myself up nonstop. Yep. And so now that I realize it, I'm like, oh, well, now I know what to do to so change look this out. game. Look out for Lily. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm so happy. I, I can tell by just, you're just glowing. And I can tell that you just have this whole new level of awesomeness about you um thank you so much i've always had i've always had the awesomeness or awesomeness i'm just figuring out how to unlock that chest where it's all been locked away you're starting to see what everybody else has seen all along yes yeah yes definitely i'm kind of going through that too and it's it's pretty awesome it's pretty amazing um oh yeah Thank you so much for coming on. You, uh, you did really great um, talking Thank and sharing you your experience. Me. I appreciate your um, your transparency and your willingness to to let everybody know about that. Um, I will just leave us with a, a couple of. I have this in like all capital letters. Like the main thing I wanted to say tonight is, and this is what I have to tell myself all the time: You are already perfect, just the way God made you. You don't act perfect all the time, and you don't do perfect things perfectly all the time, but you are perfect the way you are. (laughs) Ta-da! Does that kind of, I think that kind of sums up the conversation. Oh, yeah, definitely. Oh, okay. Well, listen, thanks, everybody, for tuning in. Thanks for sticking with us through our little technical issues. Um... I try not to go much past nine o'clock, but I hope everybody um, enjoyed this. It looks like we got lots of hearts, um, which is always nice to see because that lets lets me know that we're that the message is resonating with people. Um, So I, you are welcome to come back on anytime you want. Um, Oh, I appreciate it. And. I hope everybody has a great week and I will see you again next Monday. Thanks a lot, guys.